civil justice services sort of sits between legal and general. What happens is you contact the call centre and depending on the area of law that the person you're assisting needs assistance, they may refer you to one of the specialist um, clinics that are run by civil justice services. Um, and in civil justice services, we do um, specific narrow areas of civil law. We do anti-discrimination, consumer law, employment law. We provide assistance to um, farmers and rural producers in relation to mediations with banks to do with their debt. We provide assistance, advice and representation in social security appeals. We give advice on claims to victim assist Queensland. And we also run the civil law legal aid scheme. And I'll get into that towards the end, all right? But we, um, we only um, provide that uh, advice in those particular areas and if you ring into the call centre it's more than likely you'll be booked into one of those specialist clinics. Now within those specialist clinics we do have the 30 minute rule. <coughs> We're a bit naughty. <laughs> We're very naughty. <laughs> We're very naughty. <laughs> um, we also provide minor assistance. Now you're going to have people who may not fit the guidelines for um, a, a grant of legal aid for representation or it may be that we've made an assessment that with a little bit of assistance, that person can go on on their own. So we, we, as we're talking to people, as Amber explained very well, we're making assessments the whole time. We may even be making an assessment on you as to how you can assist somebody through a process. Um, and in particular, what we'll do is we'll provide legal advice um, and if we think it's going to make a difference, we'll provide minor assistance. And I think you'd find we do that in a huge number of our matters. Um, we're allowed 60 minutes. We're allowed 60 minutes. <laughs> and <laughs> give or take. <laughs> give or take 60 minutes. Um, but what we'll do is we'll actually help people. So we might assist them to complete um, a, a complaint or an application to the Financial Ombudsman Service, or we'll help them with a Form 2 <coughs> or a Form 8 to the Fair Work Commission, or with the drafting of their complaint to the Anti Discrimination Commission of Queensland or the Australian Human Rights Commission. We might, um, in the social security clinic, what we find is that people haven't got the evidence that they need to be successful with that particular um, appeal against the decision of Centrelink. So what we'll do is we'll say, withdraw, this is what you have to do. Here's the letter to take to the doctor for proof for your entitlement to disability support pension. This is the table of impairments. We'll do an email telling them what to do. So we provide that little bit extra. Sometimes we'll even draft submissions for people depending on the tribunal they're in and if we think it's worth it. <laughs> um, we're always making an assessment on merit and capacity and things like that. But that's the majority of our work is the legal advice and minor assistance. However, as Amber has shown you, if we think that the person is vulnerable and you'll find that in civil justice services, we have most of our um, grants of aid have a vulnerability criteria, so we're only able to do representation in very limited circumstances. The thing that makes civil justice services a bit harder is that for consumer employment um, and victim assist, there's no opportunity to refer to the private practice for legal representation. Um, there are no grants of aid for victim assist, but I will help people through the process and I help them fill out the forms to victim assist and draft submissions on delay or whatever they need. With, with um, um, consumer and employment law, there are no lawyers that we can refer externally. So not only do we have a means and a merits test and a vulnerability criteria, we then have a capacity one on top of it. And we tend to take the most vulnerable clients. And they tend to be people with disabilities or English as a second language, some level of impairment or an inability to represent themselves. As I said, if, I, if we think somebody can represent themselves and we think they've got a good case, we'll take that extra step and do the minor assistance. And I see that as being extremely effective. And it's amazing how many people will come back going, because you gave me the letter, I've been able to deal with my debt problem or I've been successful in negotiating an unfair dismissal claim. It does work. So <clears throat> as support workers, you probably want to be able to do the most for the individual client. 
and you think having the lawyer there representing them is the best you can possibly advocate for them, but sometimes it's very empowering for somebody to actually have the documents drafted for them, but then do the negotiation themselves or to attend themselves. They learn a lot more and they retain a lot more and they realise that they can actually do it. But having said that, we're very aware of the vulnerability criteria and we have the option in certain areas of our practice to provide representation. Um, now we've got, I think, discrimination. I'm going to just give you. John, John has to drive it. Uh, actually, so, yeah, I forgot. No, it's okay. <laughs> okay, so civil justice services. We do legal advice and minor assistance, legal representation, and we. Very happy to come out and do community education and liaisons. If you want us to come out and talk to your particular group, we're happy to do that. The other thing is we really like doing this work because we also have, in certain limited circumstances, the power to um, do submissions on policy cha um, legislative changes. So we do policy submissions and we do a lot of that sort of work in civil law. And that's because we get to talk to lots of people and we know what's happening. Um, as I say, we do anti-discrimination, consumer law, employment law, farm and rural legal service, that's debt mediations with banks for farmers and rural producers, social security appeals, victim assist Queensland, and I'll talk about the civil law legal, legal aid scheme soon. Now, with discrimination, it's very important, with all areas of law, there are time limits. For discrimination, it's 12 months from the act of discrimination. You can apply out of time, but it just makes it more difficult. So if you have somebody who has, you think, a discrimination claim, be aware of that 12-month um, time limit. <laughs> we give advice in relation to discrimination, sexual harassment, vilification, and, we, and representation is available in these particular um, commissions and courts. So the Australian Human Rights Commission, Anti-Discrimination Commission of Queensland, Queensland Civil and Administrative Tribunal, Queensland Court of Appeal, the Federal Circuit Court, and the Federal Court of Australia. Uh, consumer protection. Uh, the time limits, I might get one of the consumer lawyers to talk to you about that because it varies. Um, Queensland, uh, the Consumer Protection Unit provides advice and legal representation specialising in consumer injustices and disputes with credit providers and insurers. Now, as I say, direct advice is provided by telephone, but consumer protection recognises that we have a lot of vulnerable um, clients coming through, and we have a face-to-face -face clinic that's available in Nawa on a Tuesday, Ipswich on a Wednesday, and Woodridge on a Thursday. So you can book in for face-to-face -face with those um, lawyers. You have to go through the call centre for that, I believe. Um, they give advice on mortgages, personal loans, leases, credit cards, payday lending, hardship and unjust lending, telecommunications, debt of harassment, general insurance, and we're particularly busy with natural disasters when they occur. Uh, we do high pressure sales such as door to door, phone selling, power, telephone, household goods, funeral plans, Christmas hampers, etc. Unfair terms in consumer contracts. Now as I say, they'll be making an assessment and if appropriate, they'll refer you for representation or they'll provide minor assistance. In employment law, again, time limits are really important. If you have a person with a disability and they have been dismissed from their employment and they're a, um, they have 21 days from the date of dismissal to lodge an application in the Fair Work Commission in relation to um, their employment. I understand it's a similar time limit for state employees as well. That's a very sharp time limit and often three weeks is about the time it takes some people to come out of the, the depression associated with losing their work. Too bad. 21 days. If you've got somebody in that situation, act quickly. We provide advice and minor assistance and in certain circumstances representation. Um, as I've said earlier, we give for representation with your priority to vulnerable um, clients or at people who are at risk of financial or social exclusion. Now we don't provide advice to business owners, employers or genuine independent contractors. Genuine independent contractor, that's a, that's a difficult one sometimes. <laughs> but you know, if you feel that there's a sham contracting arrangement where somebody's being 
held out as a contractor when in fact they're an employee, you can book them in and we'll talk to them about it. Um, in limited circumstances, employment law grants of aid are available for representation, but as I said to you, it's means, merit, vulnerability, and capacity. And that applies with consumer law as well. Uh, we have, we have um, a, a limited practice that's only in the federal jurisdiction and we don't give advice or um, provide representation for state or local government employees. Uh, farm and rural legal service, I won't go into too much, I don't know if you come across too many farmers, you may. We do provide um, an advice and, and representation and mediate, for mediation with banks for farmers and primary producers. But I won't go into that, just be aware that we have that if you do come across a farmer who has debt problems. Um, Social Security Appeals, um, we provide, we undertake advice clinics at um, the Social Services Division and General Division of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal um, in Brisbane on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It's a bit different. Those, we don't provide um, an in-house uh, telephone advice clinic. If you have a client who's lodged an appeal, they can contact the registries of the Administrative Appeals Tribunal and book into those clinics. Now, the reason we do that, that the registry does the bookings, is because we have full access to the file then. It's much better. We can be assured that we've got as much information as we're going to. In fact, we have as much information as the tribunal has. We find it works much better because often with Social Security matters, the, you know, the documents can be this, this thick. And that way, if if you have a client, they can contact the Administrative Appeals Tribunal if they've lodged their appeal and asked to be booked into one of these clinics. Um, we provide advice in relation to all aspects of um, appeals from Centrelink and much of our work relates to disability support pensions and people who've been refused um, or had their applications for disability support pensions rejected. Um, as I say, the bookings are made by the AAT registry and we give advice regarding appeals from Centrelink decisions, prospects of success and evidence. And as I say, sometimes it's going to be bad. People haven't done, met the criteria and that area of practice, and you're probably all aware of it, is a fairly rigid le um, legislative area. This, the outcome of a Centrelink decision might, might be harsh, unjust, unreasonable and unfair, but if it meets the criteria in the legislation, that's it. And we will say that to people. But what we will also say is, in certain circumstances, particularly with disability support pensions, if you go back and you do whatever it has to be done to meet the criteria, you may then be successful. But we will provide that further advice. Grants of aid for legal representation and assistance. Again, according to merit, means, vulnerability and capacity. At the moment, we've got one lawyer who does that particular area. Uh, assistance for victims of crime. Now, this is a three-year time limit from the date of the act of violence, or if it's a child, they have until they turn 21. Um, we, the Victim Assist Scheme is administered by Victim Assist Queensland, which is part of the Department of Justice and Attorney General, and provides victims of crime with assistance to recover from the effects of crime. Uh, we provide advice about the scheme, how to appeal um, decisions that have been made, and we provide minor assistance with completing forms and responding to correspondence from Victim Assist Queensland. Uh, there are no grants of aid for direct representation, but I run a clinic on a Thursday afternoon and if people have letters they don't understand from Victim Assist, I'll read through them with them and give them advice as to what they can do. Now, the Civil or Legal Aid Scheme is something that I think maybe you might be interested in. Where somebody has a civil law claim that isn't covered by legal aids, grants of legal aid. So if we don't, if it's not discrimination employment, if any of those areas that we actually provide legal advice and representation in, and I'm particularly talking about personal injuries claims, um, we run a partnership between um, Legal Aid Queensland and the public trustee to, to provide a disbursements only litigation funding scheme. So that means that if somebody can find a private lawyer who's on the class panel who feels that this person has a has good prospects of success of a civil law claim, um, we will, and that, that lawyer is prepared to speculate their fees, that means do it on a no win, no fee basis, then we will um, 
consider their application, they have to meet means and merit. Um, and if they're successful, then we will cover the disbursements associated with running that particular court action. It's disbursements only, no professional legal costs are covered. So like for a personal injuries claim, we'll cover medical expenses, uh, like reports from doctors, maybe if it's a traffic matter, we'll cover um, reports about which car was heading in what direction. Um, but it's a good scheme and it's something you should be aware of if you have a client who has a possible personal injuries or medico negligence claim. Who was the partnership with, sorry? The public trustee of Queensland. And the public trustee provides the money and legal aid funds, um, does the administration of it. Um, applicants are expected to refund the scheme if their claim is successful. There are no charges or fees imposed by class and if you're not, ex if you're not successful, we don't chase you for the money we've spent. Now, they'll only give a grant of aid where there is no grant of legal aid, about, of legal aid available, so it's got to be outside the scope of what legal aid does. The action has to be within the Queensland jurisdiction so we don't do Commonwealth law. Um, an approved firm has to be willing to act on a no-win, no-fee basis. Um, aid is merit-tested and only approved if the claim has reasonable prospects of success and there is sufficient quantum. So we're not going to give you a grant unless the solicitor says there's prospects of you getting more than $20,000. And the, ap the applications are subject mostly to legal aid's means test, although we do allow a higher equity at homes. Okay, now I've left these outside. I won't run through all the areas that um, class does or doesn't do, but it's in the PowerPoint that's being prepared. And I think pretty much that's all I've got to say for civil justice services.